Mr. President, uh, I, I rise to speak today in support of a, my substitute amendment, which is what, number 197, which has been modeled after the substitute amendment that was offered by the Republicans in the House of Representatives. And I think the, the, the big question that we have to ask and the question before the House is if we are serious about doing something to help the economy recover and to create jobs, what's the best and most effective way to do that? And we have in front of us a proposal that emphasizes more heavily uh, government spending and doing it through uh, government programs. Uh, what I have chosen to offer to my colleagues here in the United States Senate is an opportunity to vote on something that does it in a different way. It allows the American people to spend the money that we use to infuse the economy with dollars that hopefully will grow the economy and create jobs. Mr. President, our nation has lost millions of jobs over the last several months. Families are hurting, businesses are struggling to survive. And as our nation weathers this turbulent economic time, we do have this decision to make. And should the Congress take hundreds of billions of dollars, tax dollars, and invest in expanded federal government? Or on the other hand, should Congress return tax dollars directly into the economy in the form of tax relief, which will create jobs and economic opportunity. The response that the uh, Democrat majority has put in front of us is to put more money into federal agencies, to renovate federal buildings, to buy new cars for federal employees. And I believe that we ought to follow a different path, Mr. President, and let the people of this country keep more of their hard-earned dollars and let them decide how best to spend, save, invest to turn this economy around. People know better how to spend their money than unelected bureaucrats here in Washington, D.C., and tax relief, not government spending, reductions in taxes to the American people will create jobs and get us out of this recession. This is what President Kennedy knew. This is what President Reagan knew. This is what I believe the American public, with their lackluster response to the trillion-dollar spending proposal we have in front of us, know as well. This substitute amendment, Mr. President, does several things. First, it shifts, as I said, the focus from government spending to meaningful tax relief in four ways. First, it provides tax relief for individuals and families. Second, tax relief for small businesses, the job creators in our economy. Third, it provides housing assistance. And finally, it provides temporary assistance to those who are dealing with the current recession. Now, first off, the bill provides meaningful tax relief for working, tax-paying families. Under the Making Work Pay Credit, the provision, the tax provision in the the bill, the majority bill, 7 million households are going to receive a check from the government that is larger than both their payroll tax and their income tax liability. In other words, rather than a one-time credit, what my amendment would do, it would reduce the lowest two marginal income tax rates for years 2009 and 2010. So essentially, the 10 percent rate would go down to 5 percent and the 15 percent rate would go down to 10 percent. This is a real tax reduction and will benefit all income taxpayers in this country. In total, there are 100 million taxpayers who would receive, on average, tax relief of $1,250 per filer each year. Married couples could receive up to $3,400 in lower taxes uh, each year. Mr. President, consumer spending accounts for 70 percent of our gross domestic product. A consumer spending, as consumer spending declined for a record six months in 2008, it's no surprise that our economy contracted over the same period of time. If we want to spur consumer spending, we shouldn't implement single-shot policies like a one-time credit, and we certainly shouldn't pour hundreds of billions of dollars into government programs. Instead, Mr. President, the best way to stimulate consumer spending is an immediate, meaningful reduction of marginal income tax rates. With respect to small businesses, Mr. President, the second part of this bill focuses on small business tax relief. Small businesses, as I said, create up to 80 percent of all new jobs and represent 99 percent of the 27 million businesses in the United States. If we want to create new jobs, we should start with helping small business, not expanding federal bureaucracies. So this amendment expands small business bonus depreciation and expensing to encourage investment in this current year, which is when we need it the most. The amendment expands the net operating loss carryback period, permitting businesses to carry back their operating loss deductions for five years rather than two. Now, several of these provisions, granted, are, are included in the underlying bill. This amendment, however, Mr. President, provides an additional $47 billion of small business tax relief. 
My amendment includes a new provision that would allow small businesses to deduct 20 percent of their business income. This provision significantly reduces the tax burden on small businesses, which would allow them to continue to hire and retain hardworking Americans. This provision would all also allow small businesses to maximize their earnings and increase in value, which will also give them better access to credit markets, another critical component to a recovery. Small businesses, Mr. President, are the backbone of our economy, and unbelievably, only 2 percent of the total in this bill, the underlying bill, the majority bill, is dedicated to tax relief for small businesses. The lack of small business incentives in this bill, in my judgment, is a serious flaw, and my amendment seeks to improve it substantially. Mr. President, I also understand that people are hurting on account of the economic downturn. Across America, we've got hardworking men and women who are being laid off because of no fault of their own. Today, they're sitting at the kitchen table wondering how to make ends meet. Well, earlier this year, Congress acted to extend unemployment insurance to provide a safety net for those who are in need. My amendment would extend the expanded unemployment insurance provisions through the end of this year. Additionally, the amendment would eliminate the income tax on unemployment insurance. This is an automatic increase in the real benefit of unemployment insurance to those who derive it. It never made sense to me that individuals would pay taxes to the government to fund unemployment insurance, and once they're unemployed and receive the benefits, then have to pay taxes on the benefits as well. So this amendment would, uh, would correct that, and it would also, Mr. President, make health care more affordable for the self-employed and other families without employer-provided health insurance, because for the first time, this, this amendment would provide an above-the-line deduction for health insurance costs. Finally, with respect to the housing market, this amendment addresses our housing market crisis. The housing market is what led us in to this recession, and fixing the housing market will help lead us out. My amendment would extend the $7,500 home buyer tax credit through December 31st of 2009 while expanding the benefit to all primary residences. This amendment would eliminate the complicated recapture rules that currently require home buyers to pay the government back if they claim this credit. In the end, this provision would help stimulate the faltering housing market and encourage responsible home ownership. Mr. President, according to the Congressional Budget Office, there are some real issues associated with the decision that we make about whether to stimulate the economy, economy with federal spending, with government spending, or with tax relief. I want to read for you a couple of things that the CBO has said, and I quote, reductions in federal taxes would have most of their effects in 2009 and 2010, the very period that we are targeting to provide the greatest economic stimulus and hope of job creation. They also stated, and I quote, that purchases of goods and services, either directly or in the form of grants to states and local government, would take years to complete. It will be difficult, they go on, to properly manage and oversee a rapid expansion of existing programs. And finally, they say, Mr. President, that many of the larger projects initiated would take up to five to seven years to complete. If we want to approach this problem with a solution that delivers assistance quickly, that is quick hitting, that gets money into the economy quickly, that creates jobs quickly, Mr. President, the way to go about doing that is not to have the government spend the money, to have it come out of Washington, to send our money to Washington, have the government take more money out of the economy and then decide how to spend it here is to get money into the pockets and into the hands of hardworking Americans and small businesses where the real power for job creation exists. Now, interestingly enough, this, uh, this piece of legislation, the amendment that I offer, was run through an analysis um, that was used. It's a methodology that was developed by the uh, president's chair of Council of Economic Advisors, and uh, her name is Dr. Christina Romer and Dr. Jared Bernstein, who is the economic advisor to the vice president. And this was a, a methodology that they used back in March of 2007 that considers the multiplier effect of various policy prescriptions and fiscal decisions that are made uh, by the Congress. And what they suggested in that analysis is that for, uh, if you reduce taxes uh, on the American public, that you get 2.2 multiplier in terms of GDP. Well, my amendment reduces uh, tax uh, taxes as a percentage of our gross domestic product by 2.8 percent. If you take that by their multiplier of 2.2, you get 6.1 percent 
in GDP growth as a result of cutting taxes. Now, if you go on further, they suggest that for every 1% increase in GDP, you get three quarters of a uh, percentage change in jobs. So um, if you take the 6.1% uh, growth in GDP and multiply it by 0.75, you get a 4.6% increase in the number of jobs. You take our full, the size of our workforce today, which is about 133,876,000 em employees, and you plug in that 4.6% increase, and you get a job growth increase, a job increase over the course of the next two years as a result of making these changes in tax policy of six, almost 0.2% increase in jobs. Mr. President, the proposal we have before us is, uh, has suggested that they could get up to, to um, you know, another three million jobs perhaps from this, but I would suggest that if we can create uh, double that amount, six million jobs as a result of reducing taxes, it is a much better solution for our country to get our economy back on track and is also done at a lot less cost. The overall cost is, according to CBO, of my amendment is about $440 billion compared with the $900 billion that it will cost for the proposal that the Democrat majority has in front of us. Twice the jobs at half the cost. That, Mr. President, sounds like a solution that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to the American people who understand clearly that you don't send your money to Washington and hope that the government can spend it to create jobs, that the way to create jobs is to get money back in the hands of the American people, back in the hands of small businesses. That is what will lead us to that growth and gross domestic product, that the expanding economy, and the job creation that's associated with that. Twice the jobs are half the cost, Mr. President. I hope that uh, my colleagues will support this amendment. It is a much better approach to dealing with what is a very, a very serious economic crisis for this country, and uh, I think the American people believe that. I hope that my colleagues here in the United States Senate will support it as well. Mr. President, I uh, yield back the balance of my time. Before I do that, let me also say the co-sponsors on this amendment are Senators Kyle, DeMint, Joe Hanson, Hatch. Thank you, Mr. President.